Hello, welcome to Math Talk, the video series where I bring you math-related videos. <laughs> so, I went to upload uh, the video last night on Gloria Hewitt, and, it, and in the description it said, upload each mathematician. So I had to make two videos. Oh my gosh, I'm so silly. Um, so, this video is going to be a little cozier than last video, but this video will be talking about William Clayter. William Skyflin Clayton. William Skyflin Clayter. I think that's how you pronounce his middle name. I'm sorry if I'm mistaken it. Skyflin. <laughs> okay. This video is going to be on William Skyflin Clayter. Um, it's going to be a little cozier. It's going to be a straightforward oral presentation. So, cue the intro. everybody and welcome to Math Talk where I bring you math related videos. Today is History of Math. We will be talking about William Clayter, a uh, famous mathematician back in the day. Um, we'll be covering the topics, transition, we'll be covering topics of his background information, we'll be going over his growing up and living conditions, um, we'll, then we'll head on to his education, then his career path, then his greatest awards and achievements, leading up to the last years of his retirement. Let's get started. Okay, um, William Clater was an African-American male born in January 4th, 1908 in Norfolk, Virginia, not too far away from here. Um, and he grew up with his education in the Washington, D.C. area. Now, this is the biggest thing that upset me when I was researching William Clater. Um, there was nothing, nothing about his earlier life, nothing, not much information before his college life. It's something I really wanted to study upon and share with you guys, but I could find no information of the, uh, what he did before college. Um, I just seen what schools he went to, but nothing much apart from that. So, yeah, it would have been interesting to see how he got into mathematics. So after William Clater uh, finishes high school, he goes on to attend college at Howard University. Um, Howard University is going to be his start and is going to be his ending. Um, this is a university where he later spends the rest of his career, but he doesn't find out until much, much later. But that's We'll talk about that at the end. But Howard University, that's where he attends college and gets his bachelor's degree. He earns his bachelor's degree in 1929 and even goes for his master's degree. Now here's the crazy thing. At Howard University, he is taught under the mo the one of the most famous mathematicians in the nation. Um, African-American uh, mathematician Dudley Woodward, who was second in getting his PhD in mathematics in the nation. He's a genius at mathematics, so Dudley Woodward was there teaching the soon-to-be famous mathematician who pars up with Dudley. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so, he, he's at Howard University, right? He, he goes on to get his master's there after he graduates with his bachelor's, and Woodward, Woodard, uh, sorry, Woodard is, makes a huge, makes a huge debut at, uh, at the university by starting a master's program for mathematics. So during that time, uh, Clater takes that opportunity and goes for his master's at that university. Now, Woodard taught Clater at this university in the master's program, and he foreseen the talent Clater had to offer. I mean, Clater soon to became uh, next to him in the PhD level, but that's later in the story. But yeah, he graduated the following year in 1930, just one year later, from Howard University, and he got his master's in mathematics. So he 
got his ma uh, bachelor's in 1929 and got his master's in 1930, and he decides to continue his education uh, to go for the PhD. So Claytor decided to follow in Woodard's footsteps by getting his PhD at the same institution that Woodard went to. Um, so Claytor went to go on to get his PhD at Penn's Graduate School of Art and Science. Um, that's where he, Woodard went, and that's where Claytor decided to go as well. Um, so, during his climb to his PhD, he was mentored under John Klein. And during his climb, uh, he received a scholarship and a very high, it's known as the highest, honor, honorary award. Um, the scholarship where he, in which he studied under was a Harrison Scholarship in Mathematics. And that was earned during his sophomore year. I mean his second year, I think. Yeah, second year. Um, and the award in which he got upon graduation of getting his PhD was the Harrison Fellowship, Harrison Fellowship in Mathematics. Um, so those were... That was his major award upon completion of his PhD, and once he got his PhD, he became, he marked a milestone for himself. Upon completing his PhD, the milestone Claytor achieved, he became the third African American in the nation to be, to earn a PhD in mathematics, along with Woodard, his Old to, uh, his old mentor for his master's, which who was second in the nation for his PhD. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Now on to his career path. Now, Claytor hops between many different careers and he eventually goes back to where he started from right in the beginning. Well, you'll see at the end, but uh... But upon completion of PhD, he um... He goes to teach at West Virginia State College. Uh, he becomes a teacher. Um, he did this for three years. Now, after those three years, he received another honorary award, which was called the um, Rosewald Scholarship. Now, what he did with this Rosewald Scholarship, uh, he stopped. He decided to stop teaching at that uh, West Virginia State College and he becomes a researcher at the University of Michigan um, with a team to study topology. Now, Claytor lived in a time in an era where racism was very bad between the whites and the different races. Um, Claytor received heavy criticism for being a researcher at the University of Mich Michigan um, it got so bad to the point where he doesn't want to do it anymore, where he doesn't want to be a researcher later in life, where he doesn't want to be involved in any research, doesn't want to be involved in any jobs that have racism. Like, it got really bad for him. Um, so he goes to the University of Michigan to study uh, topology. Um, it got so bad where he eventually... Uh, was dropped out of that college where he left it. Um, he couldn't become a faculty member of the University of Michigan because of racism. So he goes on to, te uh, to teach somewhere else. Now Claytor decides to do something totally different. Well, not totally different because he's still a teacher. But he goes and joins <coughs> the U.S. Army. Um, he joins the U.S. Army from 1941 to 1945, and from 1942 to 1944 to 1945, um, he teaches anti-aircraft artillery to the U.S. Army men. Um, so he's still teaching, but he's serving in the U.S. Army, and now it's from 1941 to 1945. So Claytor served in the U.S. Army for four years, until at 1945 he said, hey, I'm going to go study at college again, or he's going to teach at college again. So, at 1945 is the last year he served, and he goes back to teaching college again. From 1945 to 1946, he goes to Hampton, 
or Southern University to teach for one year. And from 1946 to 1947, he goes to Hampton Institute to teach for another one year. And from 1947 onward is where his career is more linear, or is actually linear. Um, in 1947, for the rest of his career, he was invited back to his original college where he got his bachelor's and master's at Hampton University. So this is where the rest of his career unfolds. He worked at Howard University from 1947 all the way to 1965. So he worked there for 18 years before retiring. So later started as a lecturer from 1945, wait, no, 1947, I'm sorry, and becomes, eventually raises and gets promoted all the way to the chair of the department in night, up to his retirement. So he became very successful. He graduated successful. He, he ended his career successfully and retired successfully. Unfortunately, uh, two years later, after his retirement, he passed away. So that was the history of William Clater's journey through life. Um, we've seen how successful he was. He was a remarkable mathematician. He was a genius mathematician. Um, I found it amazing. My favorite fact about this guy is that he, he worked under the top two first African-American men that graduated with a PhD. He learned other than those two and he became the third person, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, in conclusion, um, in conclusion, I wish, I wish I could have studied his earlier life. I mean, his earlier life would have been interesting, seeing how, how he flourished in mathematics, seeing how he loved mathematics, see how he did in mathematics. I would have loved to see his earlier life, but it was nowhere to be found. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll leave you with an uh, inappropriate ending song. Thanks for watching. See ya!